What's going on, guys? It's Mike from Hardcore Italians. I'm here with Mario Rizzotti. Uh, okay. Say it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, you say it oh, right. right. That's okay. okay. Rizzotti. It's a little tricky to pronounce. No, I'm just uh, kidding. Mario is an Italian culinary expert. Um, he's a judge on Iron Chef. Um, he just an expert in what type of Italian foods again? Olive oil. You I'm said. an expert in authentic Italian cuisine, mm -hmm. uh, authentic Italian products. Uh, so anything from olive oil to balsamic to prosciutto to parmigiano to mm -hmm. tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, I actually put a lot of passion in that, yes. and I decided to learn more and uh, mm -hmm. share my wealth of knowledge with everybody at Harper yes. Italians. Yes. Okay. Great. Love to hear it because um, that event we were at, I could definitely tell you're an expert in. Just anything that has to do with Italian food, we were going back and forth a lot about just the differences. Yes. Can't wait to get into it and for everyone to see exactly what the differences are. Um, but first, you know, we always want to ask people to do interviews with us, like what's your background in Italy or how you came to America, uh, your family, things like that. So if you want to give this. Perfect, yes. First of all, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been a big fan of Hardcore Italians, which out of all the Italian Americans uh, website and uh, movements, this is the only one I... I really see myself where mm -hmm. there is room also for educating our great Italian Americans about also the authentic Italian culture. Mm -hmm. They're both very good. Yeah. But I think that you know it's 2020 and Italy has evolved. Yeah. And uh, our great grandparents left in 1900, and <laughs> you know after 120 years, I think that there is more to talk about. Yeah, 100. Uh, the background: I was born and raised in Rome, Italy. Uh, then I decided to. Uh, uh, unfortunately, my father passed away, so we buried him in Gaeta, which is a home that we had south of uh, Rome. So mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time between Rome and Gaeta. Okay. Uh, Gaeta is known for the olives, Gaeta mm -hmm. olives. And uh, after that, then I came here. My brother was here. I came to see him. Uh, he did not show up, but uh, yeah. I actually ended up in a small restaurant in Glenview, Illinois. It was called oh, Ginotto, cool. Trattoria mm -hmm. Ginotto. And uh, I started to help him out, and uh, believe it or not, I started as a dishwasher. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, that was not what I came for. I came yeah. for vacation. Mm -hmm. And I have seen so many Italian flights out there, <laughs> so many Italian restaurants out there, but I could not see uh, a lot of the Italian food that I just left mm -hmm. when I was in Italy. Yeah. And wow. uh, I was a little bit surprised because yeah. I was like, what's, uh, you know, chicken Vesuvio or yeah. you know, meatballs on top of pasta or Italian beef? And I'm like, yeah, it's a little it's different. A lot of, a lot of stuff I love it. See there. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Caesar salad. Yeah. I enjoy the flavors, but there was stuff that we don't have there. So mm -hmm. I decided to start to learn more about the ingredients and then educate people on understanding the difference, mm -hmm. like I say all the time, between a Ferrari yeah. and a red car. Yeah. They're both red. <laughs> Doesn't True. mean they're both Italian mm -hmm. or they're both Ferraris. Yeah. And uh, learning more and more and more about the tradition of Italy and what came here. Mm -hmm. and why that Italian-American cuisine was known here gotcha. and where did it come from? Yeah, so it just so sparked your in. interest. Well, that's kind of crazy. Like, I thought you had some cooking experience in Italy beforehand or something. You started as a dishwasher. I, I think that the cooking experience in Italy always comes from your mom. Yeah, Everybody exactly. can possibly agree mm -hmm. that my mom, besides using her favorite weapons, <laughs> which was the wooden spoon that you have yeah. on your shirt, yeah, yeah. or your mattarello, yeah. you know, the rolling pin, mm -hmm. uh, those were also cooking utensils, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's what I started to learn because the passion that she was giving it to us, involuntarily, uh, that was actually amazing. You mm -hmm. know, the, yeah. we, we were three men in a house, my father, and my brother, and I, and uh, at lunch or dinner we had three different meals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, not everybody, probably some Italian moms or Italian girlfriends right now, they're looking at me saying, I'm not going to do that. I, say, I, I, I agree. Yeah. But this is how spoiled we were. I guess. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, that was the tradition that started from there. And, um, again, yeah. my I forgot to mention to you, there is a cookbook coming out next year, so we're going to keep that on hold. But yeah. there is Great. a lot of, uh, of my mom influence into my love for what I'm doing right now. Okay, and, and is it that like kind of, is that where you kind of started learning from too, or did, how did you learn? Because I mean, you obviously your experience is crazy. Everything, everything yeah. it's, I learned from my mom. Okay. But I also learned from, you know, a lot of people are very worried here to teach you about Italian recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go a step back. Yeah. Let me teach you about the ingredients that go in the recipe. So if you have a salad that calls for X amount of extra virgin olive oil, yeah. uh, if you put a crappy olive oil, you mess up yourself. Yeah, it messes up everything. So, okay. and everything in your recipe. So, why don't we 
teach people how to distinguish a good olive oil, mm -hmm. a good balsamic, a real parmigiano from Parmesan cheese, and so on. They're both very good, don't okay. get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't want to diminish anything. I'm not here uh, in America to tell this is good and this is not good. Yeah. This is what it's supposed to taste. Yeah. You make your choice as a mm -hmm. consumer. Yeah, exactly. If you want to get into a Ferrari or if you want to get in the yeah. red car. So. Yeah, exactly. So it's just good to have the knowledge and background and stuff. So um Correct. Yeah, so I kinda wanna get into just how you became an Iron Chef judge too from there before we start going into specific products and things like that. Um because that's very interesting. That doesn't seem like an easy accomplishment. It like is I, not. Yeah. It is not. I was uh, for many years with a company called Academia Barilla, which was the little sister of Barilla Pasta. Mm -hmm. And uh, during uh, that time, I get to meet a very important person for my success in the States. And there gotcha. was also um, one of them, but uh, definitely the biggest one. It's Art Smith. Art used to be Oprah's Winfrey's uh, private chef. Oh, okay. Wow. And uh, I was at his house several times doing educational classes on olive oil, balsamic, mm -hmm. and uh, one day we had this party at his house, which uh, also my former boss, Kimberly, uh, she helped me to get there, and there was the introduction of Giada De Laurenti's new cookbook, okay. and uh, we were there, and Art was very nice, saying in front of this person, uh, Mario is very passionate for what he does, it's very yeah. passionate for authentic Italian cuisine mm -hmm. and Italian ingredient, he should be a judge on Iron Chef. Yeah, and, um, that's awesome. That is a story almost like Tom Cruise bartending, and then somebody <laughs> says you should be an actor. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Didn't get there yet, but <laughs> I will. And yeah. that person that he introduced me to, his name was Bruce Seidel. He was one of the bigger shots uh, cool. in the Food Network, and cool. he's the one that got me there. Awesome, that's great. And um, so when you have contestants on the show, like, what do you look for? Because now you're talking to ingredients, I'm a little interested. Like. Do you look for people who have respect for the ingredients or kind of thing, or is it more the way they cook, or how do you judge contestants? Well, as you know, uh, when you judge an Iron Chef, you go there with an open mind yeah. and an empty stomach, uh, <laughs> number one. It's a good number saying. two, yeah. it is the fact that you have to remember your secret ingredient has to prevail in every dish that they make. Okay. So when people start to put two pounds of garlic on a dish, and don't get me wrong, I know Italian Americans love garlic, but there is yeah. one thing that is true, there is a lot of garlic, and there is such a thing as too much garlic. So, okay. But when you put too much pepper or too much uh, garlic in your dish, mm -hmm. that will cover the flavor of the secret ingredient. And okay. uh, that's gotcha. something you gotta be careful and learn how to balance these flavors in your dish. Gotcha. Uh, I don't cook with a lot of garlic myself, I don't cook with a lot of hot peppers, um, or peperoncini, like we call them in Italy, it's nothing mm -hmm. to do with the green one here. Yeah. But it's because there is a lot of ingredients that they have an amazing flavor profile. Yeah. That they don't need to be overloaded by all these spices that they don't give credit to gotcha. the other ingredients. Okay. So I looked into the secret ingredient, the flavors that they're supposed to come out of there, and how they actually explode in your mouth mm -hmm. if they are in the dish. Okay. Wow, yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah, that's, um, so like how you were saying with the garlic, um, you know, when we were talking before, you were co uncovering like kind of a lot about how, you know, maybe Italians, Americans put a little bit more garlic than they do in Italy. Like, you know the background story behind it. Like, what are some more misconceptions would you say in the stories? Because it's super interesting, like, for everyone to know, like, how did that come about? And like, what are more food well, misconceptions? Garlic was, uh, was always abused in many dishes. I respect Italian American cuisine. Yeah. But again in real Italian cuisine very few dishes calls for lots of garlic. Okay. You know, pasta aglio olio or some of the dishes in the seafood you put in there. But in the cooking, uh, usually you put the garlic and you lightly saute the garlic. It turns brown and I know you're gonna hate me for this, <laughs> but uh, you pick it up and you throw it in the garbage. Okay. So the oil gets the flavor of the garlic. I got and it. that's what the dish is usually called for. And that's why you want to use the garlic to give flavor profile to your dish. Mm -hmm. But I am against to kill the flavor profile yeah, of the against, dish. Like I mean, overloading it. That makes sense. You know, I guess. We don't have vampires in Italy. We don't have to worry about <laughs> having so much garlic. And uh, we don't actually uh, yeah. like to have a bad breath. Mm -hmm. You know, men and women like to kiss each other. And bad breath doesn't help, especially if it's a garlic bread. Yeah, true. So, so but I know some of breath. you will hate me over there right now. Yeah. But uh, please well, understand my point of view. Uh, real of, Italian cuisine does. Yeah. Well, I think it's important, though, how you like respect people's tastes, though, and stuff. Like, I don't think anyone's going to hate you because you understand, like, if people put on garlic, like, 
they res you respect that they enjoy that taste, but you just see, just because, I mean, you've been back and forth to Italy and seen the differences, and you have that real first-hand knowledge about the difference, so you obviously see it, but, you know, for the people at home, they maybe not, yeah. not so much, so. Yeah. You brought up a good point, actually. I don't know if you guys know, but over 70% of Americans don't even have a passport. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. can go to Italy, yeah. and what they know about Italy is only what they see here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, it's not necessarily what is going on there. And many traditions that we have here, they are tradition from the 1900s. Mm -hmm. They, they gotcha. were not coming from chefs. Mm -hmm. They were coming from wives of bricklayers, gardeners and carpenters, mm -hmm. that they not necessarily were actually cooking what they wanted to, but they cooked for a necessity. They yeah. were cooking and using the garlic as a necessity to cover the bad flavor of spoiled meat. Yeah. Rotten vegetables. Yeah. That that's all they had. And when an Italian family had eight, ten, sometimes I heard thirteen kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? it's hard. And the, the food is not it wasn't guaranteed yeah. every day, mm -hmm. you know. So And yeah, were, in Italy too it's more fresh ingredients every day. You go and buy it right where we're kinda of just stocking up a little more. Is that do you think that kinda of played uh, a role a little in, bit when in Italy in Italy we go to shop for the day. Yeah. We shop to cook for what we're gonna use that day, mm -hmm. sometimes for a couple of days more, but definitely we don't do the, the, the Costco style of the shopping situation. Yeah, yeah. And that was the difference also. And don't forget, you mentioned one great point. The flavor profile of so many ingredients in Italy is different also because Italy, as of today, and all the hardcore Italians viewer can mm -hmm. definitely yeah. remember this, but as of today, Italy, it is a non-GMO country. Gotcha. Therefore, you don't get your seedless watermelons, you don't get your seedless grape, yeah. you don't get your watermelon on December 25th because mm -hmm. it doesn't grow in season that time. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. another characteristic of keeping the quality of the food better and mm -hmm. tastier because of the fact that it comes in season mm -hmm. and it's very different flavor profile. I got you. Yeah, it's, that's incredible. Um, kind of what I want to touch on too is like, I know, because, um, I mean, just how we immigrated, like, Italians coming over here, and, like, there's a lot of changes, and, like, I think it's important that we all respect, like, how it came about, but I think it's super, like, important now that we kind of just respect it, but then, like, how you said, everything changes and evolves, and, like, kind of learn, it's nice to learn how to be able to make dishes like how they do in Italy and respect the how they do it there, too. Um, you know, so I'm kind of curious, like, if someone wants to start learning more about it, like, what is, what's their first step? Um, well, definitely, uh, we're going to do something together. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. something we're together. Something. Yeah. We're, exactly. Let's start to follow yeah, yeah. more hardcore Italians. But yeah, there you uh, go. And That's a good I one. promise you, <laughs> yeah. let's do some some videos exactly. where we can start to show people the basics. And uh, again, not that American Italian cuisine evolved so far is not good, but yeah. things have changed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the... The, the, the portions in Italy, as you know, they're not. Yeah. Like, they're, you know, they don't serve the pasta in a boat, but in a plate. Yeah. And therefore, Italian pasta and carbs are not bad for you. Mm -hmm. What's bad for you sometimes is the portion that you actually serve and eat. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. think about it. All of you know, and they heard before, mm -hmm. pasta, pizza, and bread are bad for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Everybody's skinny like you over there, <laughs> and there is an obesity level is very low. Yeah, it's and so therefore, yeah. what's bad for you yeah, is nothing. the amount that we eat. Yeah, carbs are not definitely the killer. How much carbs are we assuming? Mm -hmm. Probably that could be what makes a big difference in an Italian cuisine mm -hmm. and in your diet every day. Because Italy is part of the Mediterranean Sea, mm -hmm. so the Mediterranean diet is the most healthy and well-known diet in the plant. Yeah, exactly. So right away before we start doing more videos and stuff like that together, just portion control is probably the good tip to keep in mind. Portion control, yeah. quality of the ingredient, quantity of the ingredient. You can make a great pizza mm -hmm. with two slices of fresh mozzarella on top mm -hmm. uh, instead of putting 10 pounds of grated American mozzarella mm -hmm. cheese. They're both very good. Mm -hmm. Again, you will hear that from me a lot. Okay. It's not that it's good or bad, but it's better health-wise, to watch the quantity of ingredients, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, you want to hear something funny? I was in a, in a pizzeria yeah. in Chicago, mm -hmm. Neapolitan, and I ordered pizza with just tomato sauce. Yeah. And some people look at me and say, oh, but then why do you order that? What's, what's <laughs> on pizza then? is not, that is an excellent dish. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit of fresh tomatoes, mm -hmm. Italian tomatoes with exactly. a little bit of oregano, salt. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't need too much, yeah. Um, That's it. Mm -hmm. I know too, like a lot of people, 
because we always say nonstop because everyone thinks we're from Chicago. Like all we eat is deep dish out here, and that's what it is. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad you brought I'm up leaving. about. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. I'm glad you brought up about how there's other places here too. You know yeah. what I mean? But um, yeah, and uh, I kind of want to touch on too because I know you're back and forth to Italy. You said four or five times a year. Yeah, I just um, got back. Actually, I was there for a couple of weeks. So I do was you... in Modena to oh. hand select my new balsamics for the web page oh, wow. for my store. And I was in Umbria where I go actually and finally select a new version of uh, our Italian spreadable mm -hmm. beer. Yeah. And limoncello jelly. Yeah, those Positano. are crazy. Yeah. So they're, they're a cool thing. That's yeah. what we would like to bring on my website, mm -hmm. which is mariorizzotti.com. Yeah. And I like to educate people to understand that there are different ingredients that are not just the everyday pasta. Mm -hmm. There is some unique you. pasta, unique cookies, and that's what I just came back for. Cool. So you can help provide some of those ingredients too through the site, which is great. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, so just to touch on, because um, a lot of people don't know, like even me, I've never been. Like just in Italy, like what's the experience like compared to Amer like an Italian American place versus a place here in Italy? Like what would you say is the main differences? Like is it back to kind of what you said with the ingredients, or like I'm talking just like the whole general feeling when you're out there and in a restaurant. And, uh, I have to tell you that the, both restaurants are very good. The, 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 don't forget that what's available here sometimes mm -hmm. is not necessarily what is the restaurateur like to use. Okay. Uh, some restaurants will like to use different quality ingredients or different products from there, but sometimes the cost of it, sometimes the fact that they're not available 24-7, they yeah. make them actually make the choice of using American Italian product or produced here. Mm -hmm. But again, there is a difference in flavor profile. Okay. So both of them, I mean, the Italian one, the Italian restaurants uh, also have hard time to find a good olive oil. Yeah. Don't think that there is only bad olive oil over here. There is bad extra virgin olive oil over there too. Okay. And sometimes because of the food cost, they are forced to use cheap products. Gotcha. They use, they're forced to use cheap cheese, not necessarily an Italian mm -hmm. cheese. So, as you can see, things are changing not only here, but over there too. Okay. Quality of the ingredients, not because they are Italian, are necessarily getting the best of. Mm -hmm. If you watch Italian news, or if you actually follow some of the Italian newspapers, you mm -hmm. see that there is uh, mozzarella coming from Germany with an Italian name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, is that the same flavor? Is that the same quality? Or is it just used because it's cheaper? That could be the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and yeah, I want to ask you about that too, because I remember you were saying before, um, when we first met about products that are made in Italy or, you know, not made in Italy, like there's a huge difference just by the phrase, like how do you, yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> this is a big topic, yeah, you know, I just, you know, uh, a lot of Italians are also, uh, let's say that Italians in this country are the one that they actually knew this the least. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't blame them again, and I'm not trying to point finger, but I'm trying to educate people to understand. So if your product says made in Italy, mm -hmm. most likely it's not Italian, because it's only assembled in the country of Italy. Yeah. And you can actually get, from everywhere, you can get the products and assemble it in Italy. Mm -hmm. So, ladies, I know you want your boyfriend to bring you your Italian purses or Italian <laughs> shoes, Alligator skin, <laughs> a crocodile skin, whatever you call it. But last time I seen an alligator in Italy was <laughs> Roman Empire, probably. So yeah, that's that yeah. shows you that the product, which is mainly made with, it come from another country. It doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, made in Italy is still different in craftsmanship than many other countries, but it's not Italian. Mm -hmm. Packed in Italy is not Italian. It's only packed in the country of Italy. And imported from Italy is not Italian. It's only shipped from the country of Italy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't know if you have time in the camera, if you can see, but you yeah, know, this is the answer to your question. You know, right to be 100% Italian the has to say products of Italy. Now, does it mean it's the best? That opens up another can of worms. Yeah, I was but, just going to you know, ask you that. But too. at least you yeah. know that you're spending the money for the famous theory of the Ferrari and not yeah, the Yes, so you're not getting kind of played in other words yeah correct um, so, agree, so product of Italy is Italian mm -hmm. so look that for your product on your products doesn't mean it's the best but yeah. at least you know that exactly. you're having something that is it is 100% yeah. Italian mm -hmm. uh, we're not talking about the bottle is packed mm -hmm. or the box but what's in it it is a product of Italy mm -hmm. and some of you skepticals hardcore Italian fan they might say oh but you know they make their own stuff over there they mix and match yeah yes guys there is <laughs> there is a chance that they have done it but looking for product of Italy, sure enough, can be a guarantee of quality better than 
older. Yeah, um, that and yeah, I was, was kind of going to bring that up too because, like you said, it's not that important that it's a product of Italy because you can get some ingredients better elsewhere. Um, Correct. I know for us, like, we kind of get a couple questions too, like, is this made in Italy or product of Italy? And we always say no, and kind of people are like, well, you know, is that what you, really what you're about? And, you know, we kind of just tell them, like, no, our, what we're about is spreading Italian-American pride and, like, reaching Italians and teaching them stuff like this. If we bought t-shirts in Italy, I mean, we would charge $30, $40 a t-shirt. No one would be out wearing the stuff. Um, you know what I mean? Our page wouldn't be as big. Like, so that's the thing is, like, we try to keep it Italian-American. We, we want to support Italian-American jobs. Like, if we were charging $40 a t-shirt and got an order once a week, we would not have five... We won't be here, years. guys. Yeah. Not even doing videos. This, yeah, this would not be possible. So, you know, it's nice to kind of touch on that a little bit, yeah, too, it's, because it's, people... It's a good point. Yeah, kind of like uh, what you said, respect for the ingredients, like, have respect for the movement correct. that we're doing, too. Like, it's all about just respecting, like, what the what the company's trying to do, what the chef's trying to do, um, you know? This so. is Mike, there is companies in America that make some, very few of them, they make some very good mozzarella. Yeah. Uh, some great producer in California, they do good olive oils. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some great producer in California, they do great tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, again, doesn't mean if it's Italian, it is going to be the best. Sometimes I've seen company here that they're doing such a good job that they definitely can yeah. uh, be jealous in Italy of the final product. Mm -hmm. Now again, does it taste different? <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, that's the difference that mm -hmm. you gotta figure it out. But again, like you I say, gotcha. if you wanna do it authentic Italian, one hundred percent, even in Italy. In Italy, I mean, how many of you have been to Italy? Have you been to Italy? Well, <laughs> listen to me. Have you seen cotton fields where they make cotton for your T-shirts? I didn't. Yeah. So where does the material come from? So they are made in Italy, but most likely probably yeah, it, it comes from somewhere even, else. Yeah, you're right. One hundred percent. Let's respect the craftsmanship. That's for sure. Let's respect also the fact that we have between the best uh, fashion designer in our country and a producer of uh, Italian products. And, mm -hmm. But again, we are here to educate you on the difference, mm -hmm. not to actually tell you what's good and what's bad. You, you like a, a Californian tomato? I respect it. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> then if you tell me the pasta doesn't taste the same, then... <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I gotcha. Um, so is there anything else you want to tell everybody too, like kind of more about um, just your experience and just being Iron Chef Judge and what you want to help? Because you are super passionate about everything. Like what do you want to teach? Like what's your way of teaching America like how to uh, learn it the right way and things like that? Uh, how am I teaching Americans the right way? One by one, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Unless uh, Oprah Winfrey is listening, then we can do something <laughs> together. Yeah. And, uh, Mike and I mm -hmm. and Oprah. And uh, I think that people are becoming more knowledgeable thanks to the help of food network and all the cooking channels and uh, our core yeah. italians now to understand yeah. the difference on how to select the product mm -hmm. now we haven't talked about that very much here because yeah. uh we're we're working on new episodes am i right yeah there you go see right I now right. As, as people are watching this we're we're, on we're this working second. on new episodes <laughs> yeah. of understanding how to distinguish mm -hmm. a good olive oil mm -hmm. a good balsamic a good pasta so therefore you have to stay tuned, keep following us. I think that Great. the best way to get there and to teach many more people, this is one step that I've done. It, it is mm -hmm. the first time that I ever, ever cooperate with an Italian-American yep. uh, group uh, because I see that what you guys are doing appreciate is exactly mm -hmm. well appreciated by me as well, being an Italian. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, I get the jokes and I get the yeah. all fun things. And by the way, the accent is real. And so, therefore, you will see and learn more about Italian cuisine mm -hmm. and uh, what your grandma did and what the Italian grandma is doing right now in Italy, which might wow. be different. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, um, that's kind of what all the talks we wanted to touch on today. Um, you know, I want to give a little, well, the products too on your site. Obviously, I want to plug the site. Thank so you. You said it's just... I will, let's do a, it's MarioRizzotti.com. Mm -hmm. You will see it probably down here somewhere, hopefully. Yeah, we'll put it down uh, there. And uh, then uh, let me actually, you know, for all of you viewers, uh, let's do a discount yeah. so that you guys can actually even um, get more appreciation for being hardcore Italian. So That's we're going to say 
Hardcore 20. Yeah, Hardcore uh, 20 hardcore sounds 20 good. Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll put uh, we'll put in the description. Yeah, something down yeah, here down there, or yeah. down there <laughs> yeah, or whatever we'll, on the screen or yeah, right we'll, here or right here. I don't know, whatever <laughs> yeah. our friends are going to put it. We'll put it there. And then, and, like, uh, where else could we, um, everybody find you? Um, you know, are, you're on social media, right? I'm on social media at Rizzotti Mario, which is my last name and first name. Uh, I used to be, I was going to do for Mario Rizzotti. But yeah. there's somebody in Argentina that has my name and last name and woke up before I did. <laughs> yeah. But you That's can see crazy. me on Instagram, you can see yeah. me on uh, mainly Instagram is the biggest Instagram way is your you main. can find me. Yeah. And Facebook as well, you can find me there. Cool. And if you have any questions, you can go on the contact, ask me as many questions as you need. That's and great. and I hope that all of you as a viewers understood the whole meaning of why we're here today. The meaning is because we want to make sure you understand we I do respect American Italians but so many things in Italy are done different way I want people to see both sides. yeah you want people to see and be knowledgeable about everything why not we're in a digital media age we could do it um, so let's start doing it and piecing it together I'm excited so I'm excited too mm -hmm. yeah uh, we're definitely gonna see uh, a lot of cooperation together coming up soon yeah and, uh, Hopefully in a hardcore Italian logo on my chef jacket, yeah, you never know. That's the next thing for you know, sure. That's yeah. the next thing, that's good. And uh, if you have any questions, please send them the question to Mike and then to Hardcore Italians. He will forward it to me and I'll make sure to answer every single one of your uh, thousands and thousands and <laughs> thousands of viewers and followers you guys have. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. Ciao, thanks grazie. again, everybody, for watching. I almost yeah. left because he pronounced my last name wrong, but, uh, you know, we'll yeah. keep it that way. I got right? it close this time, yeah. so 